Thank you. It's been a fantastic series and I've traveled to some amazing destinations and tasted some sensational food. And here we go again for the last time this series. This time, I'm off to Thailand. I'm Brett McGregor, and since I won New Zealand's MasterChef, I've been doing a lot of traveling. Travel broadens the mind and the palate. I want to taste intense flavors, share inspiring recipes, and make new friends around the world. This is my 18th visit to Thailand. I love the people, I love the food, and I love exploring provinces that are off the main tourist path. Pechaburi runs along the coast of the Gulf of Thailand. It's a holiday town, but not that Westerners would know it. It's got a different flavor to your average holiday destination. This is where local Thais come to holiday. From a foodie's point of view, there are two main things that define Pechaburi. It's seafood. Holy! Now that's a prawn. And it's sweets. So you could say that Pinchaburi is the sweetest town in Thailand. So if I want to learn about Thai sweets, I'm in the right place. In fact, I've managed to swing a date with three of the sweetest sisters in town. The Sum Si sisters are legendary around here for their Thai sweets. They're hard to find, and you can only visit them by appointment. Saladika. Welcome to Brani House. Thank you very, very much. It's beautiful. Thank you. One of the sisters has agreed to show me her foy tong recipe. Now, I've always wanted to make these. Okay, well, let's get into it. We've set up for two so I can really learn. Okay, a couple of duck eggs by the look. Ah, so quite gentle on the break. She seems to be a lot more delicate than I am, but... Mm. Ah, and then really carefully... Take the yolk out. I see. You know that really firm bit of white that sticks to the yolk? You need to get rid of that part and just use the runny part of the white. You know what? It's not often you get to cook in a house that's 180 years old with the fifth generation. Okay, so just like a civet home or a really fine chinois, pour that in. And if you know your eggs very well, you'll always know there's a bit of stringiness in them. And I suspect that all she wants to do is to get rid of that stringiness. So you'll get a very, very finely strained egg yolk and a touch of egg white. Now this is where the magic happens. We've just got a little bit of water, one to two cups with some jasmine flowers. If you don't have any jasmine flowers at home, you can easily use rose petals or even just a couple of drops of rose water. Straight in. Now this is a nice hot wok. Oh. I've got some sugar, two cups. Now the key here, whenever you're making a syrup, you want to make sure that that sugar is nicely dissolved, but a little bit of the water has got to evaporate off. Wow, it's deeply aromatic now. It's deepened in colour, and I can still get a slight whiff of those jasmine flowers. Okay, so it's just a little tin, I suppose, with five holes in the bottom. And I think, what are you going to do? Okay, so egg straight into there. Oh, yes, okay. And this will just create those beautiful threads that we've seen. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. I had no idea it would make that much. One egg yolk goes a very, very long way. You know, I love learning simple recipes that we can use at home as a garnish or even as a really simple dessert. But the proof is in the tasting. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I've done a pretty good job. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, then you, you. <laughs> Please, you try. <laughs> the best thing about Thai culture, they're always trying to feed you. So, 
It's good? Good. It's good? Lie, lie, lie. <laughs> There's another Thai dessert that is entrenched in Thai culture, once only reserved for the Thai royal family. Khao Chat is a series of sweet and curious dishes that take you on a bizarre journey of the senses. There is a lot of time and effort gone into this little ball. There is some prawn, garlic, there's caramelised shallots and lemongrass, there is some coconut, some peanut brittle, and then caramelised with sugar. It's sweet with a slight savoury edge, but not sweet as we know it. It's served with this rice that's in ice water with a hint of jasmine. Together, it's a real assault on my senses. I'm not really sure how to react or what to tell you, but that's not even what I want to talk about. It's this. I have never tried anything like that before in my life, and I'll give you five seconds to try and work out what you think it is. It looks like candy floss. It's definitely sweet, really caramelised, but it is stingray. There's no fishiness. I just don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. Coming up, I'm looking for clams. I work hard for my recipes. You could win a culinary escape to Hong Kong. Let Hello World and Cathay Pacific fly you and a friend to Hong Kong with return flights from Auckland, Wellington or Christchurch. Spend four nights at the luxurious Four Star Park Hotel in a superior twin share room, plus learn how to cook traditional dim sum with a two hour cooking class. Go to tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller to enter. Good luck. I'm in Pechaburi, Thailand, a province known for its sweets and seafood. I have an opportunity to learn a local clam dish, so I'm heading out to do some clam hunting in the mud on the sea floor. But putting your hands into the unknown <laughs> is a freaky feeling. Oh! <laughs> <you> Finally! <laughs> oh, this baby. <laughs> This baby better taste good. <laughs> it's difficult without being able to see them, so we've only managed a humble bounty so far. <laughs> okay, I'm not quite sure, but I think we're moving to another location. If I can get in the boat. <laughs> We're moving to a new spot they say might be easier. And it turns out our boat is not that fussy about whether it's on water or mud. Now this is a different story. As soon as we arrived, all the crabs scattered. Now that I know what's in there, it doesn't make it any easier. One knee lie down like this. Okay, this is clamming, next level. This is a tough job, man. And so far, I've got two in my bucket and about 30 minutes work, so me and your money doing this job. I definitely don't think this is any easier. It's definitely hard, hot work. I'm counting on him to get as many as he can for our dish later. You know, I suppose the downside of working these mud flats is the simple fact that we're now stuck. I suppose it's going to be about another, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes for that tide to come in so that we can get out of here and start cooking some clams. I work hard for my recipes. With enough water to get going again, I'm speeding back to Bankun Sai village for a clam cook-up. For those of you wondering, yes, I have had a shower, although Moi probably doesn't think so. She's known as the village cook, and when she does something, everybody turns up. If you're doing this at home with pippies, cockles or mussels, we all know what we're doing. you just got to boil them until they're just opened. It only takes a couple of minutes in really hot water. Well, that's quite amazing. I thought they would have opened up, but they haven't. I think she's taken them out just a few seconds before. I think it's because she wants them to be plump and nice and juicy. Just take your fingers. Oh, and that's very easy. And just prise it open to reveal 
what we're after. Now I hear there's about 10 or 15 people coming to eat today, so I hope we're preparing enough. The last thing I want is a hungry guest. Look at those. <laughs> okay, so. Ah, num pla, fish sauce. So two of those, one, just one. Okay, so that's our salty element. Two, looks like lemon or lime juice. I'd say lime juice. Two of those, I reckon there's about three tablespoons, six tablespoons in all. That's our sour note. Ah, a little bit of onion. Two of those. Oh, the mango. Now, I love green mango. It's really, really good. A lot of people sometimes, they just eat it straight off the tree, a little bit of salt. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, toasted coconut. Two or three? Three. One, two, three. And that's just done in a dry pan. You just toast it nice and slowly until it's really golden. Well, this looks like palm sugar. So it's palm sugar just mixed with a little one, bit of water. One, one. one of those. Now there's your sweetness. Now this is the part I've been waiting for. Chili. How much chili? Here we go. And finally, looks like some crushed peanuts. Three, one, two, three. And that's going to give it some really good texture. It smells amazing already. You know, there's something really special about not only going out and getting your own food, but learning these really localised recipes. Now that looks outstanding. Should we go try? Come on. Sadika. <laughs> I wasn't kidding when I said when Moy cooks, the whole village gathers to eat. I only hope we've made enough. Please, everybody. Ah. <laughs> you know, there's one thing I miss about home, and that's eating with the family. It's always such an awesome experience, but... Aroi? Aroi! <laughs> Another seafood that's caught by the net load every morning all along the Gulf of Thailand is crab. Whoa, there's a bit of weight in there. When I arrived here the other night, I popped into a local Thai restaurant that was really not much to look at. It was full of Thais, which is always a good sign. But I had one of the tastiest crab dishes I've ever eaten, and I've got to show you how it's made. Somebody come. Okay, now this is a super quick dish. A little bit of garlic and some coriander root. Radio. Okay, I can do that. Never ever throw those coriander roots away because they are absolute money. Righty, we're using some beautiful high heat oil there. It's neutral in flavour, but it can be super hot. That's at about 200 degrees. And those little soft shell crabs, oh, look at that. Change colour straight away. Outstanding. Okay, so we're just going to set those aside, I would say. Let that excess oil drain off. Now, just for a little bit of added flavour, we're going to use a little peanut oil. Say when, Chef. Yes. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Now that is the garlic and coriander root. It's going to stick to your wok or to your fry pan, so you've got to keep it moving all the time. Okay. Okay, a little bit of salt, some oyster sauce, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of soy sauce, and just with that extra bit of caramelised flavour, and some palm sugar as well. Just want to put a little bit more oil in there to stop it sticking. Oh yeah. All this is to finish off is some really nicely slow cooked garlic. And we are done. Who says you need to go down to get some fast food when you can do that in about two minutes time? <laughs> and this is magic. A little bit of coriander to finish. You know, we've just done this with soft shell crab, but at home you can easily use chicken or any other protein. But please chef, let's go. Thai fast food at its best. Ciao. Recipes featured are available at tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller. Next, I'm back on the sweet trail. Let's go, Auntie. Kanuntan, here we go. 
you could win a trip to Sydney and the New South Wales South Coast. Fly to Sydney, pick up your rental car and enjoy a leisurely drive to Mollymook, where you'll spend two fabulous nights at Bannisters by the Sea. Enjoy dinner for two at Rick Stein at Bannisters, then head back to Sydney's vibrant city centre. Enjoy two nights exploring the new dining precincts, including Sydney's inner city suburb of Paddington, to enjoy dinner for two at St Peter. Go to tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller to enter. Good luck. Pichaburi province in Thailand is known for its sweets, and among the best are kanom tan, or palm cakes. Auntie Somjit has invited me to her palm farm to show me how to make them from the ground up. This one? Oh, smells good. Smells good. So there are two types of palm. There's a male and a female. Now the male fruit is full of juice. But the female is full of juice and fruit. So I guess that makes the female just a little bit more useful. It's not the first time I've been told that. Let's go, Auntie. Kanum Tan, here we go. Wow. Yeah, the smell here is amazing. It's kind of like a cross between a mango and oh, I don't know, but I thought it was a coconut. But that is a palm fruit. I can't wait to see what's on the inside. Wow, I'm gonna give that a go as well. Okay. Om. Oh, om. Om. It smells beautiful. Bob. Okay, so we're just peeling them. Oh, it's really easy. Look at the colour of that Bob, flesh. Bang, 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 bang. I think I've just worked it out. You just take off the very outer bit piece and leave as much of the flesh in there as possible, and it's actually a lot easier to peel. Look at that beautiful flesh. Oh, it's kind of like one of those uh, spaghetti pumpkins almost. I think that's what they're called at home. But I have never smelled anything quite so delicious. So, straight into some water, and we've got to wash because there's a seed on the inside. Wow, a lot of work, huh? It's like doing the washing. It's really thick, so that the juice that's coming out is almost like you've kind of pureed a mango. Now there's a reason we're squeezing all the goodness out of there, because this fibre, you just can't eat it. It would all get caught down in your throat. It would be like eating pink bats almost. Time to strain. Just got a little thin cloth there. You could use a muslin cloth or a really fine sieve. It's amazing how much juice is coming out of those four palms. So we've put it into an even finer piece of material, and that's to get rid of the water. Obviously the water was needed to get all of the goodness out of the fruit, but now we don't want that water in the final dessert. And this is what you end up with after half a day's straining. So what's next? Two cups of rice flour. Okay. Now we've got some evaporated milk here. Nom sop. Nom sop, evaporated milk. Ooh. Okay, I would say that's probably about Kati. eight to ten tablespoons. Kati. Coconut milk. Kati. Two, three, four. All right, you're just going to do this until you get a nice batter. It still feels quite dry, actually. I'm surprised. Okay, just going for a little bit more. Is my mixing okay? Okay, it feels beautiful. Now at home, obviously, we don't all have access to beautiful palm fruit like that. So what I suggest is using a thickened mango puree or any kind of thickened stone fruit would work really, really nicely. And now for that little bit of extra sweetness. Good. <laughs> now I'm mixing this and I can feel already that the sugar is starting to dissolve. Definitely about, I would say, three quarters of a cup of coconut milk has gone in there. It feels silky smooth, very, very beautiful in fact. Like with any good dessert, 
a good pinch of salt will really bring up that sweetness and make the palate go crazy. That is definitely not a Thai trick. That's a well-known trick all around the world. And after four hours, that's what you end up with. That is absolutely amazing, naturally fermented. So if you look really carefully, we've just made some little boats out of banana leaf. And now it's just a matter of filling each one up. Just grated some fresh coconut here, just for a little bit of extra magic. And then straight in the steamer. Right here, oh, that's not just water in there. I can smell pandan leaves. So they go onto steam. And from my understanding, it's 20 minutes. Now to give something a little special back, I thought I would serve some jasmine infused green tea. It's one of Dilmar's best. Please. Thank you. My pleasure, Kapun Cloud. But before I try that, I'm going in for one of these little beauties. Well, it's really subtle in flavour. It's got a fantastic texture. That little bit of fruitiness comes through really, really well. And the coconut just finishes it off. Delicious. Delicious. Aroi makbang. When you come to Thailand, you can always stay in one of the classy resorts. But also, there are rich rewards in venturing out to meet real Thais and experience the true flavours of Thailand. Hello. Very well, thank you. How are you? Check out Hello World's Deal of the Week to Thailand. Escape to Phuket, Thailand with Hello World. Eight nights at the four and a half star Katathani Phuket Beach Resort from $679 per person twin share. Contact Hello World on 0800 260 260 or visit tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller.